Hi everyone, it's Jillian from Hooked and Smitten. For today's tutorial, I'll be showing you how to crochet the spiral sock pattern. This is one sock, and this is the next. I'll be putting a link to the pattern in the description, so let's get started. To make the spiral socks, I will be using Big Twist 100% Super Bright Acrylic. And this is a number three yarn, and this color is called Malo. And this color is called Titanium. I will be using a 3.5 millimeter hook. You're also going to need four stitch markers in two different colors, a tapestry needle to sew in your ends, and a pair of scissors. Let's get started. For round one, you're going to start with a magic ring. And you're going to make the magic ring with whatever color you want the leg of your sock to be. For me, it's this molar color. You're going to chain one, and inside that magic ring, we're going to make a single crochet. A half double crochet. And a double crochet. We're going to pull that loop tall so that it doesn't come undone and we're going to add our first stitch marker into the single crochet stitch. We're going to add our next color. We're going to chain one and we're going to mimic the same stitches. You're going to start with a single crochet, a half double crochet, and a double crochet. You're going to pull that loop tall and we're going to add a or stitch marker or second stitch marker into the single crochet stitch. We're now going to pull the loop closed and that is the end of round one. For round two you're going to make three link double crochet into the single crochet stitch which is a stitch with the stitch marker. So you're going to start with color A and I have a video that shows you how to make link double crochets and I'll put that in the description. So if you look at the double crochet stitch, there's three parts. There's a one, two, three. Three, I call them somewhat of loops. You're going to be putting your crochet hook under the middle bar. So let's do this. So to make a link double crochet stitch, you're going to insert your hook under that middle bar and you're going to pull through one loop. You now have two loops on your hook. Remove the stitch marker and you're going to insert your hook into that single crochet stitch. You're going to pull through. Now you have three loops on your hook and you're going to pull through two loops and pull through two more loops. And you're going to make two more of those link double crochets into that single crochet stitch. So you're going to go under that middle bar, pull through one loop, and then you're going to go directly into the stitch. You're going to pull through two loops and then pull through two more loops. You're going to do that one more time into the single crochet stitch. Into the stitch. And then you're going to finish your double crochet stitch. And that's how you make a link double crochet. You're now going to pull up on that loop and you're going to add your stitch marker into the second of the three stitches that we just made. You're now going to repeat with color B what you did with color A. So going under that middle bar, you're going to pull through one loop. Remove the stitch marker. You're now going to insert your hook into that single crochet stitch. You're going to 
pull through, pull through two loops, and then pull through two more loops. Okay, under that middle bar, pull through one loop, into the stitch, the single crochet stitch, pull through two, and pull through two more. You're gonna do that one more time. Under the middle bar, pull through one loop, into the stitch, pull through two loops, and pull through two more loops. And you're gonna pull up on that loop, and you're gonna insert your stitch marker into the second of the three stitches. And that is the end of round two. For round three, you're gonna make a link double crochet into the next stitch. Go in underneath that middle bar and pull through one loop <coughs> and into that next stitch. You're gonna make three link double crochet into the next stitch. I'm gonna make one more. And you're now gonna add your third stitch marker into the second of the three stitches that you made. Okay, make sure you pull up on that loop, otherwise it will come undone. And you're gonna repeat with what you did with color A. So you're gonna make a link double crochet into the next stitch, going underneath that middle bar, and into the stitch. And you're gonna make three link double crochets into the next stitch. You're going to pull up on that loop and you're now going to add your fourth stitch marker into the second of the three stitches that we just made. And that is the end of round three and you should have a total of 14 stitches, seven per color. In round four, we will be increasing only where the stitch markers are. So we're going to begin by making one link double crochet into the next stitch. We're going to remove that stitch marker and we're going to put three link double crochet into that stitch. And do one more into that stitch. And you're going to put the stitch marker into the second of the three stitches that were just made. You're going to make a link double crochet into the next three stitches until you get to the marker. You're going to remove the marker and put three link double crochet into that stitch. You're going to pull on that loop and you're going to put the stitch marker into the second of those three stitches and that's where you're always going to put the stitch marker in the second 
of the three stitches made. You're gonna repeat what you did with um, color A with color B. So you're gonna start by making one link post double crochet into the next stitch. Followed by three link double crochets into the next stitch. You're gonna put that stitch marker into that second collar in the second stitch. You're now gonna make one link double crochet into the next three stitches until you get to the marker. You're now going to remove that marker and you're going to place three link double crochets into that stitch. And you're going to put that stitch marker into that second. I want to forget that. Okay. You should have 11 stitches per color for a total of 22. And that is the end of round four. Round five is a repeat of round four. You're going to put a, a link double crochet into every stitch until you get to the stitch marker. Then you're going to make three link double crochet into the place where the stitch markers. So we're going to start by making one link double crochet into the next three stitches. And we're gonna remove that stitch marker and we're gonna put three link double crochet into that stitch. And you can see now how important it is that you have two um, different sets of colors for your stitch markers because it helps you to keep track. I'm gonna put one more. I'm gonna put the stitch marker, replace the stitch marker always into the second of the three stitches. So we're now gonna make one, two, three, four, four link double crochets until we get to the stitch marker. There's a four, one, two, three, four, we have five stitches to the stitch marker. You're now going to remove the stitch marker and you're going to put three link double crochets into that stitch. up on that loop make sure it's big because it will come undone and you will have to start all over that is not fun 
Now I'm gonna make a link double crochet into the next three stitches and to the marker, just like you did with color A. Remove that stitch marker and put three link double crochets into that stitch. Remembering to put the stitch marker you know, I'm going to make a link double crochet into the next five stitches. One, two, three, four, five, until you get to the stitch marker. Remove that stitch marker and put three link double crochet into that stitch. You should have 15 stitches per color for a total of 30 stitches and that's the end of round 5. For round 6, you're going to make a link double crochet into the next 5 stitches. Let's do it again. I split that yarn. We're going to make three link double crochets into the stitch where the stitch marker is was. We're going to put that stitch marker into, back into that second of the three stitches. We're now going to make a link double crochet into the next seven stitches and that will bring us to the stitch marker. Remove the stitch marker and place that seventh, that will be our seventh stitch. And you're going to put the stitch marker into that last stitch that you just made. You're going to repeat with color B, making a link double crochet into the next five stitches.
and you're going to make a link double three link double crochet into the stitch You're going to put a stitch marker into the second stitch. You're going to make a link double crochet into the next seven stitches. You're going to remove the stitch marker and you're going to make one link double crochet into that stitch. And you're going to put that stitch marker back into that seventh stitch. With color B, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to make a link double crochet into the next two stitches. It's different than what we did with color A. So for color A, you should have 15 stitches and with color B, you should have 19 stitches. And you will notice by now that your pattern is starting to curl and it should do that because it's meant to fit around the heel. So that is the end of round six. Round seven is a repeat of round six. We're gonna make a link double crochet into every stitch until we get to the stitch marker. And I think that's about seven stitches. We're going to remove that stitch marker and we're going to put three link double crochets into that stitch. I'm going to put that stitch marker in the second of those three stitches. And we're going to make a link double crochet all the way to that stitch marker.
we're going to place our stitch marker into that stitch and I you notice that there's two stitches that's not worked we're not gonna we're not we're gonna leave those alone and we, we're gonna continue with color B and we're gonna repeat those stitches that we did with color A plus two more like we did in row six round six Remove that stitch marker and put three link double crochet into that stitch. And you're going to continue making link double crochets to the next stitch marker. We have two more rounds of the heel and then you'll be in double crochet heaven, kind of. But the heel is the most challenging part to nail down. But once you get that, the rest of the sock is very easy. Let's do that again because there was some split stitches. Remove that stitch marker and place only one link double crochet into that stitch. You're going to put the stitch marker back and then you're going to make a link double crochet into the next two stitches. That will be the end of round seven. So for round seven, you should have 17 stitches with color A and 21 stitches with color B for a total of 38 stitches. And that's the end of round eight, um, seven. Before we go any further, I want to say from round seven and beyond, you want to check the pattern for some notes because there are some diagrams in the pattern that shows you the way the, the heel and the sock should fit. To continue with round eight, we're going to start by making a link double crochet into every stitch until we get to the stitch marker. And I think this is about eight stitches to the stitch marker. We have one more round of the heel and then we can get busy making the leg of the sock. So we're going to remove that stitch marker and we're going to put three link double crochets into that stitch.
I'm going to put that stitch marker into that second stitch. We're going to continue making link double crochets all the way to the stitch marker. I think that's about nine stitches. You're going to remove the stitch marker and place one link double crochet into that stitch. And you're going to replace the, sti replace the stitch marker and you're going to make one more link double crochet into the next stitch. With the B color, we're going to make a link double crochet into the next six stitches and that will bring us to the stitch marker. You're going to remove the stitch marker and put three link double crochet into that stitch. We now we're going to make a link double crochet into the next nine stitches. You should have made nine link double crochet stitch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You're now gonna make a decrease. To make a decrease, you're gonna go underneath that middle bar, just like you've been doing all along. You're gonna pull through one loop. You're gonna insert your hook into the next stitch. You're gonna pull up a loop. You now have three loops on your hook. You're gonna remove that stitch marker. And you're gonna insert your hook into the next stitch. Then that gives you four loop on your hook. And I have a video that I'll put in the description that shows you how to do this if you need more help. You're now gonna pull through three loops and then you're gonna pull through two. And that is your decrease. You're gonna put your stitch marker into that decrease stitch that you just made. And you're gonna make a link double crochet into the next stitch by going on the this bar. 
So you're going to insert your hook under that middle bar, you're going to pull through a loop, and you're going to go into the next stitch, and going to finish your stitch. And that is the end of row 8. You should have 21 stitches for color A and 20 stitches for color B. So this is round 9 and this is the last round of the heel. So we're going to start by making a link double crochet into every stitch until we get to the stitch marker. And I think that's about 8 stitches to the stitch marker. You're going to remove that stitch marker and put three link double crochet into that stitch. You're going to continue making a link double crochet into the next nine stitches. You now I'm going to remove the stitch marker and you're going to make a decreased stitch by going underneath that middle bar, pull, pull through one loop, going into that stitch, pull up another loop and that gives you three and going into the next stitch, you now have four loops in the hook, you're going to pull through three of those loops and then pull through two. You're going to pull that loop tall and you're going to place the stitch marker into that stitch. You call B, you're going to make a link double crochet into the next eight stitches.
you remove the stitch marker and make three link double crochet into that stitch. going to continue making a link double crochet into the next 10 stitches. You're going to remove the stitch marker and you're going to make one link double crochet into that stitch. You're going to replace the stitch marker and then you're going to make one more link double crochet. That is the end of row nine and that is the end of the heel. I have 21 stitches for color A and 22 stitches for color B for a total of 43 stitches. We're gonna continue working our spiral socks pattern and in this segment, we're only gonna be using color A and for me, this is a maroon Merlot color. So what I do, I put a locking stitch marker in color B just to keep it sec secure and make sure that it doesn't come undone. So with color A, you're going to be making 10 link double crochets into the next 10 stitches and that's going to bring you right to where the stitch marker is. And your 10th stitch is going to be in the place where the stitch marker is. You're now going to make a row of foundation single crochet and the length of the foundation single crochet will be determined on the size of your foot. So you're going to go under that middle, middle bar, you're going to pull up a loop, pull through one loop, you have two loops on your hook, you're going to pull through one loop, you have two loops on your hook. You're gonna pull through those two loops. And that is your first stitch for your foundation single crochet. 
you're gonna go through those two loops and on the bottom it looks like a V you now have those two loops on your hook you're gonna pull through one loop and you're gonna pull through two and you're gonna go ahead and put your stitch marker into that first stitch that you made for your foundation single crochet so you're gonna continue making a row of single uh, foundation single crochet and this is where you want to look at the pattern and look at the, the diagram the length of the single crochet should reach um, next to your ankle so please take a look at the pattern and see the way it's done so continue making a row of foundation single crochet and I'll meet you at the end you should have a row of foundation single crochet that look like this. You're now going to go ahead and attach that row of foundation single crochet onto the other side where the stitch marker is. So in order to do that, you're going to go into the bottom of the foundation single crochet. You're going to pull through a loop and you have those two loops on your hook. And you're going to insert your hook into the stitch almost like in an upside down position, making sure that the color B is facing you. You're going to remove the stitch marker. And you're now going to pull through a loop, pull up on the loop. You have three loops on your hook here and you're going to pull through two loops. And then you're going to pull through two loops. And what that does, it kind of makes a stitch that looks like a double crochet stitch. You now I'm going to make double crochets into every stitch around. You want to keep track of the stitches for the leg of the sock and the foot because those are your own measurements and when you make the next sock you want the stitches everything to come out even. So go ahead and make a row of double crochets all around and I'll meet you on the other side. Your first row of double crochets should look like this. You're going to continue making double crochets all around. For me I needed 48 double crochets and for you that might be a completely different number. So you're going to continue making double crochets all around. The pattern suggests uh, 14 rows uh, more or less and that's going to be a personal preference. So go ahead and make as many rows of double crochets as you need and I'll meet you at the end to show you how to fasten off. I made 14 rows of double crochets. Yours might be more or less. You want to start making double crochets at the above right corner of the sock. And this is where you're going to start making the stitches to fasten off. To fasten off, you're going to make a half double crochet into the next five stitches. Four and five. And you're now going to make a single crochet into the next five stitches. One. Two, three, four, and five. And you're gonna fasten off and you're gonna cut the, cut the yarn. We're now gonna start working on the foot portion of the sock. We're now gonna start making the foot of the sock. And this is the heel and this is the leg portion of the sock. The bottom of the sock is going to be made in linked double crochet stitch. The linked double crochet stitch creates a much thicker and denser fabric and that creates more cushion and it will prevent the sock from being worn out as quickly. To begin the stitch pattern for the foot, I'm going to remove the lock and stitch marker and we will be working only with the color B, with your color B, whatever that color is. And we're now going to make a link double crochet and we're going to stop one stitch before a stitch marker. And that number before your stitch marker is going to be different for everyone. For me, it's, it's going to be seven link double crochets.
So now I am here. I have one stitch before the stitch marker and I'm going to remove the stitch marker and I'm going to make a decrease. I'm going to be decreasing by making three double crochets together. So to do that you're going to wrap your hook and insert your hook into the stitch, pull through two loops, wrap your hook, insert your hook into the next stitch, pull through two loops, wrap your hook one more time and go into the next stitch, pull through two loops. You now have four loops on your hook, you're going to wrap your hook and pull through all four loops. And you're going to put that stitch marker back into the stitch that you just made. And that's how you make double crochet three together. You're now going to continue making double crochets all the way until you get one stitch before the next stitch marker. So continue making double crochets all around and I'll meet you there. I'm now on the other side of the work and I have one stitch left before the stitch marker. I'm going to remove the stitch marker and I'm going to double crochet three together to make a decrease in this corner. So you're going to wrap your hook and insert your hook into the stitch, pull up a loop, pull through two loops, wrap the hook, go into the next stitch, pull two loops off. Now you have three, wrap your hook, go into the next stitch, pull two loops off, you now have four and you're going to pull through all four. And I'm going to put my stitch marker into that decreased stitch that I just made. To start making my link double crochet, I'm going to use the last stitch from the decreased stitch. So I'm going to go underneath the middle bar of the last double crochet. I'm going to pull through a loop as normal, like we've been doing, and then I'm going to go into the next stitch. And I'm going to finish my link double crochet stitch like that. And you're going to continue making link double crochets and you're going to stop one stitch before the stitch marker and you're going to make a decrease. And you're going to make two more rounds like this. So you're going to have a total of three rounds and three decrease on both sides. Remembering to stop before one stitch before the stitch marker. So continue making this stitch sequence and I'll see you at the end of the third round. I'm now at the end of round three and I have one stitch left before the stitch marker and I'm just going to make my final decrease by making three double crochets together. Gonna continue making link double crochets until we get to the next stitch marker. So continue uh, making those link double crochets and I'll meet you at the next stitch marker. I'm now next to the stitch marker and I'm gonna remove the stitch marker. I'm going to place one double crochet into that stitch. So I'm not going to be increasing and I'm going to continue making double crochets until I get to the next stitch marker. And I'll meet you at the next stitch marker. So here I am at the second stitch marker and I'm going to remove the stitch marker and in that place I'm going to just put a double crochet so there will be no decrease. I'm going to start linking the stitches for the bottom of the foot for the link double crochets and I'm going to insert my hook on this part of the double crochet that I just made. I'm going to insert my hook into the next stitch like we've been doing and finishing a link double crochet stitch. I'm going to put my stitch marker back
and you're going to continue this stitch sequence for as many rows as you need and that number is going to be different for everyone depending on the size of your feet you're going to stop just before your toes and you can look at the, the pattern to see the diagram as to how to do this you also want to leave the stitch markers in place so that you know when to switch over to the, either the double crochet or the link double crochet stitch so continue making this sequence of stitches and I'll meet you at the end and I'll show you how to fasten off and you can start making the toe of the sock. For me, I ended up with 13 rounds for the foot area and we're now going to fasten off. And we're going to fasten off the same way we did the leg. We're going to make a half double crochet into the next 5 stitches. That's three, four, and five. We're now going to make a single crochet into the next five stitches. That's two, three, four, and five. And we're going to make a slip stitch into the next stitch. We're going to cut our yarn and we're now going to get ready to make the toe. Before you begin making the toe of the sock, you're going to find that last double crochet stitch that you made and you're going to place a stitch marker into it and you're going to do the same thing on the other side. There are four rows of the, of the toe area and all four rows is made using the link double crochet stitch. You're going to add, to, to start making the toe, you're going to add color A. And for me, it's this mobile color. And you're going to insert your hook under the last stitch, which is a single crochet stitch. You're going to pull your yarn through. You're going to chain one. And into that same stitch, you're going to make a single crochet. Into the next stitch, you're going to make a half double crochet. And you're now going to start making link double crochet stitches. And you're going to make link double crochet stitches and you're going to stop when you get two stitches before the stitch marker. And I'll meet you there. <clears throat> I'm now two stitches away from the stitch marker and now I'm going to make a decrease. You're going to pull three loops off the hook and then we're going to pull two. And into the place where the stitch marker is, we're going to make a stitch. A link double crochet stitch. Remembering that all four rows of the toe is made in link double crochet. We're going to put that stitch marker back in place and now we're going to make another decrease. And we're going to continue making link double crochets around until we get two stitches before the next stitch marker. So go ahead and make in your link double crochet stitches and I'll meet you two stitches before the stitch marker. So you're now at the second stitch marker and you're going to make another decrease just like you did on the other side. You're going to remove the stitch marker and you're going to put one stitch into that, into that stitch. You're going to put the stitch marker back in place and you're going to make another decrease. And 
and you're going to continue making link double crochets until you get to the another stitch marker So you're going to make four rounds of the toe area and you're going to stop on both sides. Every time you get two stitches before the stitch marker, you're going to stop and you're going to make a decrease. You're going to put one stitch where the stitch marker is and after the stitch marker, you're going to make another decrease. So a decrease before the stitch marker and a decrease after the stitch marker. And you're going to do that until you have a total of four rounds. So go ahead and continue your stitches and I'll meet you at the end of four rounds and we will close the toe. I'm now at the end of the toe area and I'm, I have three stitches left. I'm going to finish those stitches. I'm going to finish with a decrease. Now we're going to fasten off I'm going to cut my yarn I'm now going to flip my, my sock on the wrong side and I'm going to sew in the, the ends. I'm going to use a whip stitch to close the gap around the toe and to make a whip stitch you're just going to be going in and out of the stitches and you're going to be doing that all around. After pulling your stitches together, if you're left with a little bit of a hole, just go ahead and stitch it closed. You're now going to go ahead and sew in any ends that you may have. And when you come back, we're going to finish the leg of the sock. To finish off the sock, we're going to start by um, adding color B. And I'm going to make, before I get into the ribbon of the sock, I'm going to make a row of reverse single crochet around the edges, um, also known as a crab stitch. That portion is optional. If you just want to get right into the ribbon, you can go ahead and do that. If you want to make the crab stitch portion, you're going to start by putting a slip knot on your hook and you're going to start by working under the, the last stitch of the row, which is a single crochet stitch. You're going to pull your loop through and you're going to make a single crochet. You're going to turn your hook upside down and you're going to go into the next stitch. And you're going to grab your loop and pull it through. You're going to go into the next stitch, turning the hook upside down and grabbing the loop, pulling it through and finish your single crochet stitch. I have a video tutorial that shows you how to do this if you need further instructions and I'll put it in the description.
and you're going to continue making reverse single crochets all the way around and I'll meet you there to, fit, to start the ribbing of the sock. Now that you've finished making your reverse single, your row of reverse single crochet stitch, you're going to start making back post single crochet by going into the other direction from right to left. You're going to make a back post single crochet around every stitch until you get to the other side. So go ahead and finish your back post single crochet and I'll meet you on the other side. Now that you've finished making your back post single crochet stitches and this is what it should look like, you're going to start making the actual ribbon portion of the sock. And to begin that, you're going to chain two. And the ribbon of the sock is made in front post and back post half double crochet. So your first stitch around the back post single crochet is going to be a front post half double crochet. And the next stitch is going to be a back post half double crochet. Followed by a front post half double crochet. Back post half double crochet. And you're going to continue that sequence of stitches all the way around. And I'll meet you there. At the end of the row, you're going to make a slip stitch into the top of the chain two. So far, you've made one row of the ribbon. The pattern suggests a total of five rows. That's a personal preference. If you want to make more, um, you're more than likely to do so, or if you want to make less. To continue with the ribbon, you're going to, make, you're going to chain two, and you're going to make a front post half double crochet around the next stitch, followed by a back post half double crochet. And up next is an, another front post half double crochet and you're going to keep making alternating front post and half po and back post half double crochet all the way around and you're going to make as many rows as you need to so continue making those stitches and I'll meet you at the end to fasten off I'm coming to the end of the fifth row of the ribbon and I have a few more stitches left and five rows works perfectly for me as mentioned before that may be more or less for you and at the end I'm gonna make a slip stitch into the chain two and I'm gonna fasten off And that's the end of the sock. You're now going to sew in whatever ends you have left. And hopefully you went ahead and keep track of the stitches for the foot area, for the leg area, and for the foot so that when you make the next sock, that both are the same size. So go, go ahead and make another one exactly the same way. And as always, thank you for visiting my channel. Please like and subscribe for more video tutorials.